Hi guys. Um, I miss you all. I really wish we were back in school. It really kind of stinks, but I hope you're all staying safe and at least trying to have some fun, be positive about this situation. Um, but I know it does really stink for everybody. Um, today I thought we'd just, I'd just get on and we'd go over the physical characteristics of the neonate or the newborn. And so go ahead and just watch this and then go back to Canvas and tell me one thing you learned and one thing that you thought was interesting. So we call a newborn a neonate. Neo means new and nate means birth. And so they're a neonate for the first month of life. So the first four weeks, they're considered a neonate. After that, they're an infant. All right, and we're gonna start with their reflexes because newborns are born with a specific set of reflexes um, and they indicate the function of the nervous system. It tells the doctor that they're healthy. And also some of them are there for early survival skills. Now, reflexes are the basis for most of the neonates' movements. They don't have any muscle control, all right? And so they rely on these reflexes to do things like find food and protect themselves. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the three reflexes that kind of deal with the mouth. And the first one is rooting. Now, when you stroke an infant's cheek, they're gonna turn their head to that side and open their mouth um, because they're expecting for you to feed them. So whether you breastfeed or you use a bottle, to get them to find that, you're gonna stroke their cheek, they'll turn their head and open their mouth. Now this one disappears by about three months old. At that time, they kind of learn cause and effect and they're like, oh, it's time to eat. So they'll just automatically turn their head to the food source. Next is the sucking reflex. This begins when something is placed in their mouth to initiate eating. So as soon as you put something in their mouth, they're going to start sucking on it. Now, Infants sometimes use the sucking reflex for comfort, and that's where we use things like pacifiers or binkies, whatever you call them. You do that, and this one, the reflex disappears by about four months, all right? And then after that, it's a learned thing, and so they learn that when they suck on the pacifier or the binky, they're calmed. And then the last one is the thrust reflex. So this is one that's kind of dependent for survival. When you put something solid in their mouth, their tongue automatically tries to push it out. So sometimes you'll see parents of newborns really kind of holding that pacifier in their mouth. And it's because they're trying to get them to stop the, three, the thrust reflex and start sucking on it. All right, this one disappears by about six months, four to six months. So it's kind of pointless to start solid food until this reflex disappears. You need this reflex to be gone, otherwise they're just gonna spit out those first tries of baby food. All right, next is the moro or the startle reflex. When they hear a loud noise or they're moved suddenly, the baby's arms and legs are thrown way out to the side and their head falls back and their back kind of arches. You can see a picture of it down below this one disappears by about four to six months, all right? This is um, an early survival skill. When something startled them or they thought they were being dropped, their arms um, fly out so they can try and grab onto something. All right, next is grasping or Darwinian. And this, there's two, there's the palmer and the planter. So the palmer involves their hand. Whenever you place something in their palm, their fingers wrap around it really, really tight. They make a fist around it to hold on. All right, and same thing with the toes. When you touch the bottom of their toes, their toes curl around the object and hold on really, really tight. Okay, tonic or neck, or sorry, tonic neck or fencing is when they're put on their back, they make a fencer-like position, like they're gonna fence, like on guard. All right, so one arm is going to extend and they'll look at that side. And then the other arm is going to be bent in. All right, so if you look down at the picture, the baby's um, left arm is extended and he's looking to that side. Now, if you were to pull that um, other arm out, his head would automatically go to the other side and his left arm would um, fold up. All right, this one disappears by about five to seven months. All right, Babinski. Babinski is a cool word, but it's when if the sole of their foot is stroked, their toes fan out. This one takes a little bit longer to disappear. It disappears by about one to two years um, of age. And so your doctor will just keep stroking their foot to see if their toes are fanning out or does that reflex go away and their toes curl in. All right, the walking or the step reflex. 
When a newborn is held under their arms and their feet are on a flat surface, they make a kind of a walking motion, so one foot in front of the other. Now, obviously, they aren't going to take off and walk because they don't have muscle or strength to be able to do that, but they make those stepping motions. Kind of as like a precursor to walking. All right, let's go over some of the physical characteristics of the newborn. All right, oh, that baby's cute. All right, but really, newborns are kind of funny looking. They have some funny characteristics that we're going to talk about. All right, first, the average weight is seven and a half pounds, and their length is about 19 inches. Okay, they're kind of thin and scrawny. They don't have a lot of body fat at seven and a half pounds. Now, after birth, they will experience a slight weight loss. So it's very common to have a baby and it loses a couple of ounces in the first couple of days. It's just because they're tired. Labor is a hard process even for them. So they sleep, they're not eating a lot. They're losing some water from the amniotic fluid that they were drinking. So they should gain it back within two weeks though. All right, so here's a birth weight comparison. So the baby on the right is seven and a half pounds. Okay, the other ones are considered low birth weight. They're under five and a half pounds. All right, so you can see how much of a difference those two pounds make on a newborn. Like that baby on the right looks like a sumo wrestler compared to those other ones, all right? Those two and a half pounds are or two pounds are really critical in the health of the baby. All right, their head to body ratio. A newborn's head is huge in comparison to their body. It's a fourth of their body length, all right? Now, fortunately, as we get older, our head becomes more proportionate to our torso, so we don't walk around looking like an alien, but their, their heads are huge compared to their body. All right, the head can also be misshapen or elongated because of the compression during the birth during the birth process like if it's in the birth canal or engaged in the mother's pelvis for a really long time they kind of come out looking cone-headed and that's because of the fontanelles or the soft spots so the infant skull isn't fused all right and that's so that it can compress during delivery all right now these soft spots don't fully close until the infant is two years old all right, you don't need to be super, super careful of them, but they are kind of, I'm gonna be honest, they're kind of creepy a little bit. All right, sometimes you can see the baby's pulse in this front one. If the baby's dehydrated after it's been sick, the fontanelle gets, or the soft spot gets really shrunken in. So just be gentle with it. All right, their facial features. They have a tiny jaw and chin, puffy cheek, short tongues, and dry lips. Their lips are always dry and kind of cracking and peeling, all right? Just kind of put a little bit of chapstick or something on them if it gets really bad or they look sore. Their nose is short and flat to make breastfeeding easier. You don't want that nose to get in the way when they're trying to latch on. All right, their eyes. Typically they're grayish blue or dark brown for the first six months. It's not uncommon for there to be red splotches in the whites, all right? And sometimes their eyes are crossed or appear like they're crossed because of weak eye muscles. All right, um, they do not shed tears for the first three months. So those first newborn cries, their tears aren't involved until they get a little bit older. All right, their skin, they have dry, blotchy skin. It's not uncommon for them to be all red in places. Sometimes their extremities, like their hands and their feet turn blue because their circulation isn't like <clears throat> going well. All right, sometimes they have birthmarks. Some people have cute na names for them, like an angel kiss or a stork bite. A darker skinned baby will have a Mongolian spot, which kind of looks like a bruise right here above its tushy. All right, they'll go away within the first year. All right, very few birthmarks kind of um, stick, or, stick around longer than that. All right, jaundice. Okay, 60% of newborns experience jaundice, and it is because their liver is immature and not functioning quite yet, so they're not breaking up the bilirubin in their blood. So that makes their skin and the whites of their eyes appear yellow. So your doctor is going to try and get <clears throat> that baby eating as much as possible to help get that liver functioning. If it's still not working, then they're going to put it under ultraviolet lights to break up that bilirubin in the bloodstream. All right, Mila. Mila is kind of the cute word for baby acne, all right? It's not uncommon because the oil glands are immature for baby to get these tiny little white heads on their nose, their forehead, their chin, all right? They'll go away eventually, don't pop it, don't squeeze it, just kinda keep wiping their face just with a damp cloth to help 
break up the oil under the skin. All right, swollen glands. So because the mother had so many hormones to help with that pregnancy, those hormones go through and get to the fetus, all right? So their genitals appear large, like to the point where if that baby's a boy, you might say to that dad, way to go, all right? Girls, it appear swollen. It's not uncommon for a girl to have a false period. It's just a little bit of blood in the diaper. Again, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just leftover hormones for the mom. And boys and girls can also leak fluid from their breasts, all right? They call it witch's milk, all right? So again, it's nothing to be concerned about. Once the hormones leave the newborn system, those things kind of go away. All right, the umbilical cord. So after they cut the umbilical cord, there is a tiny little stump that's left. It's usually about an inch to a half inch that remains. And you just have to wait for it to dry up and fall off. Okay, it's kind of gross. I'm not gonna lie, it gets all brown and wrinkly and crusty, but it should fall off within three weeks. Your job is just to keep it as dry as possible. All right, don't add anything to it. Um, just keep it dry. All right, a sucking blister. They sometimes get a little tiny blister at the top of their lip, especially if they're breastfeeding or they're using a binky or a pacifier a lot. Okay, their limbs, they like to keep them close together, like in the fetal position, all right? And so to keep them all wrapped up like this in that baby burrito swaddle is important because it help, it's comforting to them. After about six months, they'll relax and straighten out, and so they don't really like to be in the baby burrito swaddle, but they, it is comforting for them. All right, muscle control. They have none of this. They have really weak muscles. So if you look at birth, their head just flops all the way back. By about six weeks, they can support it for a little bit of time when you're lifting them up. Three months, it's a little bit stronger, all right, and your hands are further down on the torso. And by six months, they should be able to lift their heads themselves. All right, their senses. Okay, they have really weak vision. Their vision is 20 over 700. Perfect vision is 20 over 20. So you can see that they don't see very well. You, they only see about eight to 12 inches from their face, all right? They start to see color about three to four months. Everything before then is kind of muddy. Their favorite thing to look at is the human face, all right? So like even if it's just like an emoji smiley face, they prefer to look at that over anything else. And they also prefer strong contrast in color, like black or white. All right, smell is their most developed scent. They know their mother's smell. They know the smell of mom's milk. They like sweet smells like vanilla. And if they smell something they don't like, they make a grimace. All right, taste, they can taste. And they have a natural sweet tooth. And hearing loud noises may cause them to jump and do that marrow reflex that we talked about at the beginning. They prefer to high pitch sounds and they'll turn towards familiar voices. Okay, behaviors, they're gonna spend the majority of the day sleeping and eating, all right? When they cry, it's because something is wrong and you as the caregiver need to fix that. All right, you have two options to feed. You can use formula and bottle feed, or you can use breast milk. There are pros and cons to both choices, all right? Now remember, either way, they're going to eat eight to 12 times a day, all right? You're gonna spend about four to six hours of your day feeding them. Their stomachs are tiny and they burn it off quickly, so they need to eat more often. All right, they do a bunch of different blood tests in the hospital. It tests for things like anemia, PKU, cystic fibrosis. It tests for that jaundice that we talked about earlier. And they just do tiny little pinpricks out of their heel. All right, silver nitrate is the antiseptic they put in all babies' eyes to prevent inf infections that might have passed during a vaginal delivery. But honestly, even if a baby's delivered C-section, they do the silver nitrate. Okay, circumcision is done for religious reasons or hygienic reasons reasons to male babies, and it's just the removal of the foreskin around the tip of the penis. It's optional. You don't have to get it done unless it's your religion, all right? But it's, so it's your decision. All right, last thing is the APGAR test. So a baby is given a test one minute and then five minutes after birth, and they are looking for these five things. Activity, pulse, grimace, appearance, respiration. The higher the score, the healthier the baby is. So they're gonna give it a score at one minute, and then they'll do it again at five minutes. Obviously, your aim is a 10. You want a good, crying, healthy, squirmy baby. All right, 
please go back to Canvas and tell me one thing you learned from this presentation and one thing you found was interesting. I hope you all have a great week. See you later.